Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to a decidedly cold workshop today. Creality recently sent me this laser engraver. Now I've never used a laser engraver or cutter before. So let's work out together how to use this thing and work out what we can use it for. Let's get tinkering. So this has come very well packaged, all in a single box. So I've got a little flow chart. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have a look at that later. This is the 22 watt laser. Now, as I understand it, it's made up of four six watt laser modules. And we all know that six times four is 22. There's some stickers, a manual, what look like some legs, some cables, a little brush, and it looks like some thin pieces of three mil fly. This is the integrated air assist. There's a power supply and cool shades, power lead box of tools and stuff, four legs, and then the engraver itself, and a metal plate. So there's very little assembly to do. You just have to screw these legs on, and they do come with some extension legs as well if you need to raise it up a bit further. I'm gonna start by just putting these little legs on, like it says in the instruction manual. Now, the laser engraver comes with three different distances for the legs and that's going to prove really useful in my case because for me this is a workmate accessory and it needs to be able to fit on my workmate and you can see that it's longer than the workmate so the only way that this is going to work is if I put these screws in a little bit so I'm going to put them on the second one and they should be short enough distance between them now for it to fit nicely on the workmate. The air pump is a separate unit and it's sitting on rubber feet that keep the vibrations away from the actual laser engraver. The cable that you plug in is simply used to provide power and controls to the air pump and the speed of the air can be controlled with this little dial here. The air pump hose is already cabled into the machine so all you have to do is connect the end of the hose to the pump. The laser connects to the x-axis gantry using a sliding dovetail. This is used to focus the laser and we'll go into that in a bit more detail later. The power for the laser gets connected into a little box and the wires are already routed via some cable clips. The hose is also routed via these cable clips and gets plugged into the top of the laser. And this is for the air assist. On the right hand side of the machine is the socket for the power supply, the power on switch, the USB connection and the slot for the memory card. And then finally in terms of assembly there's a metal plate that you just put inside the work area to protect the surface underneath. But I've been sent the optional honeycomb base which comes with a full size metal sheet to protect your work surface. The honeycomb plate as I understand it produces better results and less burning and less staining of the material that you're cutting. When using the honeycomb base you'll have to use the little extension feet that came with the laser and if you've got uneven surfaces these are all adjustable. And that's it for setup. Expect it to take no more than about 10 minutes. The manual was really easy to follow and comes in Mandarin and English and the English is very good well written English so you won't have any problems understanding what you need to do. There are lots of photos to guide you as well which can make a technical subject much much easier to follow. There is also a handy flow diagram which is repeated in the manual which just takes you through the complete setup without any steps missed for laser cutting and engraving using either the memory card or the computer. In the included parts is a little memory card which you can connect to your computer. This not only has soft copies of the manual but also video installation guides which cover not just the assembly and installation of your laser engraver cutter but also the installation and setup of the Lightburn software. Because this is all included in the kit, I won't go through it here because it actually turned out to be incredibly easy. I'll go straight on to creating my first engraving and cutting test piece so that we can begin to understand some of the capabilities of the machine. I've created a test file 
which was literally a couple of clicks. So let's get started by inserting the memory card into the machine. You can also connect this machine directly to the computer, but I'm going to leave that for another day. I just want to take one step at a time as I've never used a laser engraver cutter before. Focusing the laser, which Creality incorrectly call adjusting the focal length, is very simple. They include a little guide for you and you just lower the laser module onto the guide at the height specified on the guide and it should be focused correctly. I power on the machine. The framing button moves the laser to mark out the perimeter of the piece that you're going to be engraving or cutting. This allows you to place the piece of material in the right place on the bed. And now all you need to do is press start. But first of all, I put my goggles on. This test varies the power along the x-axis from 10 to 100% in 10% increments and the speed in the y-axis from 20 millimeters per second to 200 millimeters per second. The idea is that you can then choose your combination of speed and power to get the desired result you want in the material that you're testing. Now I think I had these settings up a little bit too high for this machine because if you look carefully you'll be able to see that it's cut all the way through in some speed in some combinations. Basically all the ones in the bottom right hand corner. I can now read off the power and the speed that I want to get my desired result in the model that I want to engrave. There's a reasonable amount of smoke whilst engraving, so for the cutting test, I decided to assemble and use the enclosure that Creality also sent me. This includes a ducted fan that you power via USB. This is basically just a fancy tent and makes the whole machine so much larger. I think I'll have to come up with a way of enclosing this machine in the future so that it doesn't take up quite so much space. The smoke you can see here is a result of the enclosure being a lot larger than the base it's sitting on so it's actually open to the workshop on the bottom. Now I think if you had this on a larger surface then it would actually be very efficient and work very well. But for me on my workmate it's not really the right solution so I am going to have to think of something different. Keep watching to the end of the video where I'll go through some of the product enhancements that I think could be done to make this machine perfect. Now armed with the cutting and engraving parameters, I can plug those into my model. Well, I'm really impressed with the job that Creality has done in terms of the build quality and the quality of the help material that's available on the memory card that they give you. There are lots of videos that not only cover the assembly of the machine, but also the setup of a couple of different pieces of software, including the parameter files that are needed for this machine in those pieces of software. And they provide videos that show exactly how to do that. And it was very easy to follow. Well, on first inspection, this seems to have cut out really nicely. Let's get it off of the bed and have a proper look. First of all, let's look at the cut marks. You can see these look pretty good. I've chosen for my first project something that you just couldn't make using traditional woodworking techniques. This is not my design, but I'll leave a link to the design in the video description. Can you guess what it is? I'll quickly do a dry assembly so that you can see. So this is where the learning curve comes in. I made this out of two millimeter thick basswood, but the design it looks like called for three millimeter thick basswood. As a result, these joints are a bit gappy, but I can fix that off camera using traditional woodwork techniques. The point is I made this very complex product using a laser engraver. The fan on the enclosure is powered by a USB plug, but there's nowhere on the machine to actually plug this in. So you have to either provide a battery bank, which is what I use, or your own USB power supply. An alternative would be to plug it into a laptop that can power USB devices. And if you're plugging your laptop in any way to run the machine and not using it the way that I've used it in this video, which is using the memory card, then perhaps that isn't too big of an ask. But it would have been nice and a lot neater if that fan could have plugged directly into the machine. 
But then I found that if you use the supplied adapters that came with the machine, not the enclosure, then it will actually power the little extractor fan. I don't think it's designed to do this. The adapter in the manual is provided so that you can use an alternative cable to connect to your machine, but it does seem to work. I wish Creality had created a bracket for the power supply or integrated it into the machine itself. It doesn't seem like it would have been a particularly hard thing to do. For instance, I'm sure with a little bit of extra design thought, this box could have fitted in the back here. The depth of this is about a millimetre too short for this to slide into here. And that's a real shame. With the limit switches all the way back, it does actually fit. That seems like it's something that would be relatively simple to fix in a later version, just by making this piece here just a little bit taller so that the power supply could fit in that rail. And there is no cable management for that power supply either, which is understandable given that it's a free unit that you can put anywhere. And for some people's circumstances, that may be an advantage. But for me, I just like things to be neat and tidy. Well, I've been blown away. I expected this to be a really steep learning curve. And whilst I've still got a lot to learn, I've actually found it to be quite a gentle learning curve. Creality have provided all the information needed to get started and to understand what steps you need to go through to actually produce your first product. And to produce something like this, which can't be built using traditional techniques, has been really eye-opening to me and it's got me now thinking about the sorts of things that I can make in my woodworking workshop. So if you've got a workshop sort of mind or a crafter sort of mind and you've been thinking about getting one of these machines then you could do worse than get the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver. This hadn't been a review, I will do one eventually it's really just been about my journey using a laser engraver cutter for the first time. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I've given you a better understanding of these machines and how easy they are to use. If you've enjoyed this video then please leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this then please subscribe, it's completely free. You'll be doing so knowing that you're helping this little channel out and making it grow and become a little bit bigger. If you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.